some for them. And the government is uh, an act to the law that uh, gives sufficient time for the industry to accustom to this new law. So give more than a, a year for them to, to get used to the system. So during the around the one and a half year, uh, what we do is the, we try to introduce this clearing system to the industry and tell them that this will be ben benefits to the, to the industry in the long run. And so that we have a efficient cargo clearance for the legitimate traders so that they will not be stopped in our, uh, border, in our borders for a long time. And with the uh, ordinance enactment, and tell them, they give them sufficient information so that they will know when the uh, audience will come to effect, especially the uh, penalty come into effect, about one and a half years. We have uh, offer trainings to the industry, also with uh, uh, offer training to our customer officers. Besides, we need to have some kind of uh, outreach visits to the industry, holding seminars to the industry, help them how to register, and also make the system as user friendly as possible. So that even the driver, they can drive the car, they can use the computer to just uh, log in and get the information before they drive to the uh, borders to, to declare the goods. So with all kinds of these things, uh, luckily the, the system uh, uh, run quite smoothly uh, after you blow out. But definitely, uh, for any kind of technology, that means uh, for the new one, that will affect the, uh, the customs operations, but also with the industry. But I admit that, in the long run, that we, that, uh, we have a very efficient car a road cargo clearing system. And up till now, and we can also uh, I'm proud to say that uh, to the industry that the system is for the good of the industry rather than create any kind of harm to the industry. Because uh, most of the legitimate trader find that the, the goods pass through the borders uh, is uh, faster and efficient than, uh, than before. Are there questions from the audience? <coughs> this is a very quiet group. Um, I Ah, good, excellent. Not questions, but two uh, additional uh, remarks and, uh, and information. Thanks for passing me uh, the floor. Just to the, the reference that was made by Mr. Lee from Hong Kong Customs in the beginning, where there are enormous challenges of customs to make an assessment what kind of technology should be deployed at a certain type of border crossing, mitigating the threats you have, because they can, of course, uh, uh, be different per per uh, board crossing board. Just want to mention that uh, with the US, European Customs Detection Technology Expert Group, which I'm sharing, we issued last year a so-called Threats and Technology Solutions document. This document is very informative. It's written by uh, uh, experts of uh, European Customs Administrations and gives an overview of what kind of, uh, if you are uh, in, in a maritime uh, air border, land, rail, or uh, aviation, then what kind of threat and what kind of technology is currently available and best suited to mitigate your threat. And we are very happy that uh, at the latest uh, WCO SAFE uh, working group meeting, this document has been accepted as a reference document in the SAFE package. So I would inquire all customs administrations and public of the people representatives of the public sector to consult that document which is available on the um, uh, WCO, WCO side of SAFE to have a look at the document because I think it will, uh, it will uh, give additional information for all customs administrations. That's one thing. Additional information related to future research, future work to be done. You know that also within the European Union we have different commission services who looks into those issues of research and innovation which is deemed as extremely important. We are now um, finalizing the program for our new research program, which is called Horizon 2020, which has a strong component in security. And there also we have a focus also on end-user um, uh, uh, end oriented. And customs administrations are seen as an important end-users in terms of supply chain security. So also there will be a platform where also will be significant funding available to uh, uh, make the connection between the researchers, the academia, the customs administration, and the manufacturers to see what, uh, what needs to be uh, done. And the good thing of the new program is that it's not only limited to uh, European customs administrations under certain conditions, it's also open to, uh, to non-European countries. So I think that's, a, that's good to know uh, for, this, uh, for this platform. Thank you.
Two more um, very quick question: the tie-in, the data, and the technology. Um, Daniel, you showed a chart showing the illicit trade routes. Did you use data analysis? Did you use um, technology tracking? Did you use human intelligence? How did you figure out those trade routes? Um, basically, a lot of it at the moment is done predominantly through sort of uh, physical surveys in terms of looking at packs actually getting into, say, Western Europe. It's also based on seizure data from customs. Um, also, some of it's very obvious. I mean, you know, the thing about tobacco is a lot of the health warnings are in the, the language of the um, source country. So if you get product coming into the UK, which has got uh, Ukrainian or you know, Russian wording on, you know instantly where it's from. So, you know, it's not, at the moment, it's not set against a sort of broad, overarching layer of management information that's produced by technology. It's really from multiple sources. But I think our view is the more you put in the technology by definition, the more information you will get. I mean, one of the views is the more we can have sort of real-time analysis, you know, real-time verification of data, if you could start picking that information up, you start to get a very rich set of information, I think to your point perhaps, is that you start getting some very clear information about where are your hotspots, what is coming through from where, and then you can start targeting where you put more controls into your supply chain. But at the moment, it's, it's based really on sort of a combination of human surveys, bit of technology. It's not fully joined together. Uh, yes. Uh, Daniel, you showed the chart of the
come to our uh, customer officer's attention again. We immediately bring up the case and check whether the, the, uh, the POS, the, the company or the, the driver or the vehicles have the same kinds of um, uh, uh, track record before. We, we usually, uh, uh, from, we also get such kind of information not only uh, within our uh, custom uh, agency, but also from, uh, with other law enforcement agencies in Hong Kong. So that uh, to make the uh, enforcement uh, to be more effective, we need to have uh, to gather all kind of information together so that to, uh, to let the, the uh, to make sure that uh, the customs clearance work is efficient and effective. Okay, from a, a, a Dutch but also European perspective, you talk about compliance and, and, and how to monitor it. Uh, first, the European Union has set up a very detailed legal framework uh, around the whole authorized economic operator system. Uh, and this, this, this sets the standards on when a company can be considered as a trusted trader. Um, that it starts with an initially what we call a self-assessment where the trader himself judges uh, where, uh, how he meets all those criteria on safety and customs uh, and internal processing uh, um, criteria. But a very important part of the whole uh, compliance uh, system is that you monitor it. And monitoring means that the trader himself has monitoring systems in place uh, on which, which helps him for his internal control systems and internal compliance systems and customs simply do what I also showed you in, my, in, in, my, in, the, in the green part of my picture, uh, do compliance tests. This means now and then they do random checks in that system, compare them with what the company is doing and whether the company is acting exactly as they initially said they would do. That is what we call compliance. But we should always be aware that when customs have a, a compliance-based control mechanism in place, that you can never uh, hold a trader only compliant simply because he meets a few legal criteria. As a trader being compliant means that you have to internalize your good behavior as a trader. Simply meeting all regulations and having a good and efficient system in place should be a part of, let's say, the company's beating heart. If it is not, and they simply do it because they want to be a certified trader by a government, or, and they simply want to meet a few criteria, then at the end they will not make it. So you have to internalize it as a trader, and you have to be a, a compliant trader as a whole. Excuse me. Uh, my name is Alexandre Lira. I'm from Brazil, private sector, and my question is addressed to Mr. Frank Heidman. Uh, I was very excited to hear about the Dutch customs, how it works like music. It was very good to see that. And my question regards to the AEOs as well, because nowadays uh, I understand that it's not only a recommendation, but a requirement, 100% uh, scanning. But in the future, in your perspective, do you understand there is a space for soften this requirement for the trusted traders? 100% scanning is no requirement. You may, uh, not for AEO. Um, uh, maybe you have information about uh, air, cargo, air cargo security measures. And that is what we call in Europe the known consigner procedure you want to export goods destined to be uh, uh, transshipped by air and those have to be either shipped by known consigners so this is a comparable system to the authorized economic operator, uh, operator system of customs where the, uh, the exporter meets certain quality standards and if the exporter doesn't meet those quality standards then the goods must be uh, uh, scanned for 100% so it's either a known consigner or a 100% scanning of shipments being transshipped by air. Within the customs procedures, we do not know 100% scanning system. However, long-term vision is to put scanning equipment in place simply as an additional part of a source of information 
add it to customs risk assessment on data and then determine what goods you really would need to target and, phys and physically inspect. Okay, thank you. I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank the Secretary General again, Mr. Bruford and his team for having the insight to put together this conference for the audience and for my distinguished panelists for an enlightening conversation and sharing their insights. And, and the breaks are for continued discussions. And I, I hope to hear more of this in, in the hallway. And um, turn it over to you. All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Could you please share our appreciation to our panelists in the normal way for a very... <laughs> We're now going to break um, for afternoon coffee, um, kindly sponsored by Nutec, uh, again in the exhibition halls out the back. Um, could I ask you if you could be back at around 4.30? Uh, in the interest of time, I know we have a, we have a dinner engagement tonight and uh, we want to get everybody out of the hotel and onto the buses and to the wonderful dinner um, that, that awaits us. So if we could break now and be back at uh, just on 4.30. Thank you very much. Thank you.